Hi everyone and um, welcome. I can't even remember what day it is, so I'm just going to say welcome today. I'm going to talk about how we often feel a bit down or almost depressed when we cut blood sugar. And there is a perfectly explainable reason for why we feel this way. And it's completely normal. So it's nothing, you don't have to think that you have a sugar deficiency all of a sudden or that it's not good for you, etc. It's just completely normal. And if it hasn't happened to you yet, it will most likely happen to you. I'm not saying that it is happening to everyone, but I would be surprised if it doesn't happen to you. So I'm going to try to keep it a little bit short, but I also want to explain to you why this happens. So first of all, when you are eating sugar or anything that is very concentrated and gives you um, a much higher response than the natural food. So if you were chewing on sugar cane or a sugar beet, it would be sweet but you wouldn't get the massive response that you get from the extracted sugar in the cell. So what is happening when you eat it, it is that you get um, a dopamine release up in your brain in the reward center, and that is spreading around. So you get this release there and that makes you feel good. So it will produce endorphins and other things that just makes you feel like this was a really good choice. <laughs> I'm going to eat this again before, because it's something that makes me feel good. And that's how we get hooked on it. Now, when we eat concentrated sugar, because that is a concentrate from the beets or the sugar cane or wherever it's coming from, the response is so much higher than it would be if you ate any natural food. And we are not designed to do this or to respond to this much stimuli. So what is happening is that your body will think, okay, this is great, this is clearly a very beneficial food for me in terms of survivability. However, my brain is getting way overstimulated. So it will start downgrading the receptors that is actually censoring the dopamine. So the next time you're eating sugar, you will get the same amount of dopamine released, but you have fewer receptors that can sense this so the response will be slightly less. And your body will keep down-regulating these receptors as long as you're flooding it with dopamine because it doesn't like it. It's, it's, not, it's not efficient and it's not what you're designed to do. It's just like brain overload. So it doesn't want to do that. So then when you have something that will normally be pleasurable, you probably experience this, let's say, if you haven't eaten sugar for 30 days and you go and eat an orange, you're going to be like, oh my god, this is so nice and this is so sweet. But if you are regularly eating sugar and you have an orange, you're like, meh, it's not that exciting, it's just an orange. It might be like, oh, it's a bit sweet, but nothing compared to chocolate. So when, you have the, when, you, when you're not used to eating sugar, you will get a decent dopamine response from an orange. But when you are eating sugar all the time, the, the amount of dopamine that will get released from an orange isn't much. And if you don't have many receptors that can sense this, you will not get much pleasure from eating it. And you will be like, man, I don't really care about oranges. They're not sweet enough. They're not interesting enough. But if you're not eating sugar at all, that might feel like a real treat and you might feel really good from eating it. Just imagine like sometimes when we haven't had something for a long time, if you've ever been there, it's like, oh my god, these strawberries or whatever, they're so sweet and they're so heavenly and they're so nice. And that actually feels better to me anyway than it ever does to eat a lot of chocolate and cookies and whatever. That is more of a just a need to feed that dopamine in my brain. So the dopamine release from an orange is never going to be able to compare to the dopamine release from chocolate normally. And if we then remove all the sugar and we're just eating oranges or we don't even eat that, we don't eat any sugar, you're not going to have any foods in your life anymore that are going to give you that dopamine release. 
Now, you can get this with other things, like you can be drinking alcohol, taking drugs, eating bread, um, pizza, gambling, porn, all those kind of things that are just not natural, that are concentrated in some form, so you just get more of that than what you are designed to get. Then you will get a dopamine release, so you could potentially start doing any of those things, or smoking, and you will get your dopamine release. And that's why we often swap addictions. So you stop smoking, you start eating sugar, or you stop eating sugar, you start drinking, and so on. It just goes round in a circle to feed the dopamine to your brain, because that is the only way we know how to do it without feeling really uncomfortable. So what's going to happen then if you don't do any of those things, you cut out the sugar, you're going to get dopamine deficient. You don't have the receptors to feel those small dopamine releases that you get from normal food because on a scale from 1 to 10, and sugar is 10, a steak might be a 2 or a 3. So in the grand scheme, you're not really going to notice. It's not going to be exciting to eat. And you want excitement from food. Because that's what we do, otherwise you wouldn't be eating sugar. So just know that this might occur during this challenge. It usually takes a little bit before we get to there, but usually I think around week three-ish, we're starting to feel a bit depressed, a bit low, we don't really want to finish this challenge, it's starting to get boring, and we don't feel it anymore. We thought it was going to be great, but it doesn't feel good. And I'm telling you, it is not supposed to feel good because your dopamine receptors and the level of dopamine in your brain right now, they don't, they don't make you feel good. You need to give it time to normalize. I'm going to tell you from my experience what I've seen in myself and in my clients, it's usually somewhere between four and six weeks. And that is a long time. You need to be prepared to go through that. But then, when you come out on the other side, it feels really, really damn good. I can promise you that. All of a sudden, you get happy from eating a steak or going for a walk on the beach or just being outside and you can feel the happiness and you feel the dopamine um, actually stimulating your reward center and things that you don't really appreciate anymore feels really, really good and you're starting to appreciate them much more. So just rest assured that there's nothing wrong with you. You are not suffering from a carb deficiency. It's just dopamine withdrawal and it, there's this adjustment period that you will have to go through before your dopamine system will work perfectly and optimally again and then you will feel amazing. Now you might be starting to eat sugar again after these 30 days and that is obviously up to you but if you are planning on continuing longer than 30 days just know that this will be going on for a few weeks and expect it and embrace it and know that this too shall pass. So if you like these videos, please subscribe, give the thumbs up and share it with everyone you know and I will speak to you again tomorrow.